Welcome back to Data to Decisions. In today's video, we will take raw data from website ESPN.com. As you see on the screen on the left side, this is the NFL schedule for the 2023 season in a grid format. We're going to use that data, bring it into Excel, and then create what you see on the right side, which is a visual using logos. And all of this is going to be created dynamically. And we're going to use some very simple Excel formulas to actually create this visual. So now let's get started. So now for the first part of the video, we're going to focus on extracting the data from the website. So for that first, we need the URL from which we can extract the data. So I'm going to go to the NFL schedule grid page. And so I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to go back to our blank workbook. And now we are ready to go and get the data from the website. So we're going to go to the data ribbon from web. And then I'm going to go and paste that URL, which I copied, uh, and then hit OK. And now Excel is going to go and grab the data that it can grab from the website. And it's going to tell us what it found. And then what we're looking for is a table format, right? So the tables are going to be the best format for us to extract the data and pull it into Excel and do our own calculations. So let's see what it finds um, as soon as it detects it and it's going to give us the data. There we go. Uh, so now all we see is this document and table zero. I'm going to click on table zero. And this shows me that this is the table that it was able to find. And this is exactly what we wanted. However, we do have to make a few modifications. The first thing it immediately jumps to us is that the column names have to be changed. Uh, the, you know, I don't know what the first row, NFL schedule grid, um, now it's repeated again and again. So there are a few modifications we need to do. So in such cases, always go for the transform data option instead of loading it directly. So I'll go to transform data. This is where Excel will open the Power Query window. It might open in my other monitor. So let's wait and see what it does. But it's going to open it in a separate window and not in this sheet view. Um, so once it opens it in Power Query, it provides us some tools for us to actually manipulate the data, modify the data, transform the data, shape the data the way we want it. This is the Power Query window. It opened up again for me. And you can see that it already applied some steps. So what are these steps? So the first thing is, if you remember, we put the URL, uh, pasted it. That is the first step. That is what it says, source. Um, it went to this URL. So that is basically the first step. Second step is navigating it to the specific table, table zero, and pull all the data from that table. So that's the second step. This third step is something that Excel will try to do automatically to say, okay, I'm going to make them as text columns. And some of them are, if it's a number, it'll convert it into a numeric column and all that. So it's basically applying the data types. For us, the key thing is we have to make sure that we remove, um, we only keep 32 rows of data. Because if you remember, the NFL teams, there are 32. So we want to make sure that there are 32 rows. Right now, there are 34 rows. And so we want to first make sure we clean it up. So first thing I'm going to do is to remove the first row. So I'm going to go to here, remove rows, remove top rows, and I will uh, inform Excel to remove the first row. So I'll put one because that's the number of rows that I wanted to remove. Then I want to use my first row now as the headers or the column names or the field names. So I'm going to use this option to say, use the first row as headers. So now this promotes the first row as headers. So now we have 32 rows, which is exactly what we want. You can see in the bottom left, 32 rows. So this is great. And then as I scan across through the columns, I see that the first column is a team name. And then I have 18 columns. Because there are 18 weeks during uh, NFL regular season, there are 18 columns. That also looks right. There are only two things that otherwise stood out to me here. One is, um, first of all, let's understand how to read this table, right? So this is uh, an extremely important step in a journey of data to decisions. You want to make sure you understand what each row in a, in a table means. So in this case, um, the team name, so let's use uh, the first row to understand. So Arizona 
is the first team. And in week one, it is playing at Washington. In week two, it is playing against New York Giants, but they are playing at home, so at Arizona. Third week, they play Dallas at Arizona. So basically, whenever you see an at symbol that represents like it's a road game for the team, so they have to go to Washington and play. And then in week four, they have to go to San Francisco and play. So the schedule adds that at symbol in front of the team abbreviation, which is a little bit tricky when we when we will start writing formulas. Uh, sometimes there's an at symbol, sometimes it's not. So this is something that we have to remember. The next thing is, as um, in an NFL season, even though there are 18 weeks in a season, every team plays 17 games. So there is a bye week or a rest week. Um, so every team will have a bye week. So Arizona, for example, has a bye week in week number 14. So BYE is actually not a team. It's a bye. Um, so we have to keep in mind that there are 32 teams, so 32 abbreviations. And then you will also find bye as a value. And then you'll find at symbol in front of abbreviation sometimes. So this is um, these are the nuances of the data that we are observing and exploring. And we have to remember when we write formulas later. And um, the 18 weeks and uh, every team has 18 weeks of data. One of them will be a buy. So now we can get a sense of what the scheduled data uh, is structured and how we can start using it. So we are good to go. And the final thing I would do is just to call it a different name. So I'll call it grid. And then I will do close and load. So what is happening now is Power Query is actually finalizing all the things. Like, for example, we uh, you know remove the top row and all that. So it's basically applying those. And then it's going to load it into a table in a new sheet that will be created right here for us in this work. Once it's created, it will also create it as a table by default. And so since we didn't change any of the defaults, it's going to create it as a table with the name grid, which is the name that we gave. So, uh, and then there should be 32 rows in that data when it's loaded. And once it's finished, then it's just like another table uh, we can use uh, we can add more columns, we can write formulas against it and all that. So now we have 32 rows loaded and we have this table ready. And as I said, the sheet is named grid. The table is also named grid. If you see in the table design ribbon, it says grid. So everything is good so far. Now it's time for us to move to the second part of the video, which is about dynamically creating logos. So for this, I want to first show you um, on the website, on the um, ESPN.com, if I can go back, I found that I found that the logos are stored in this format, in this URL structure. This is the URL structure for Arizona Cardinals. You will see that after the 500 slash, there is an ARI as the abbreviation for the team. So if I change this to, um, I don't know, DAL, um, and then hit enter, I get Dallas. So I can use the structure to go back and uh, dynamically pull for all the 32 teams instead of manually doing it. So I'm going to go into our workbook again. And this time I'm going to go, let's say I start with column U here. And I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to use the image function, open parenthesis. And I'm going to put the, the URL that we had. So instead of putting it directly, I would do double quotes and then paste the URL um, and uh, enable. That's the security thing. In this case, I'm I'm just pulling it from ESPN.com, uh, and then I am I closed it with the double quotes, and I'm going to close the parenthesis for the image function and hit enter. So now I I got the Dallas uh, logo, and that's because this is. Uh, hard coded to Dallas. But if I want it for Arizona, I will have to change it. So instead of changing it uh, one by one, so what I'm going to do is to um, introduce um, another parameter or part of the function. Uh, I will close the double quotes after the slash and then put an ampersand. And then I want to use the value in column A. So I'm going to click on that. And then I will do ampersand again. 
So remember that now the ARI will be passed through this. So I'm going to hit OK, didn't like it. And that's because we closed uh, after the slash, we closed the double quotes. And then we use the team abbreviation. And now I have to again open the double quotes and then say dot png and all that stuff at the end. I will close again. So now I got Arizona. And if I actually drag, I get all the logos. So that's how simple it is. And we can play with the row height and the column widths according to our needs. So let me make sure if I can make it a little bit bigger. And then this one column width, let's say I stick with eight. Or let's say seven. There we go. And I can also center it. So I can select all the values and then do center. That centers it. Now, in order for me to build the logos for all the teams in the schedule, I can use the same concept, right? And then I will take this and let's say, for example, instead of this, I can say B2 and hit OK. So what is in B2 is at Washington. So here is where having the at symbol creates a problem for us because there is no image named at with at WSH. So I have to basically remove the uh, at symbol. So I will use a simple substitute function in front of the, um, the B2. And now I'm going to say, if there is an at symbol, replace it with nothing. OK, so I'll hit enter and I'll explain how this works. And then I'll do this. OK, now what we did was, instead of just saying B2, uh, which is where the, uh, the abbreviation comes from, I said substitute B2. Whenever it's you see at the rate symbol, replace it with black, which is like replace it with nothing. It will remove at symbol basically. So now with that change, now we can get all the. So let's just check a couple of things. So Washington, Washington. Let's say that the uh, Baltimore is Houston, and I can see the Houston Texans. So basically, it is working fine. The one thing that we will have to figure out is the buy. When there is a buy, what do you do? Um, so before we do that. Let me just do freeze pane. So I'm clicking here, going to the view, and then freeze pane. So this is just so that I can scroll and we can still see everything. OK, now I want 18 weeks. So there are many ways to do it. Uh, I will do a sequence. Uh, I want one row, 18 columns. It automatically puts me um, the 18 columns. I will do a column width of seven to be consistent with others. Now, if I uh, apply this formula to all um, the weeks and all the teams, by selecting everything, going into the edit mode of the formula, by just clicking inside the formula and hit Control Enter. So when you do that, the formula is going to be applied to all the cells. So this is great. I mean, it looks a lot better, but I still see somewhere there are issues or errors. And that's because those are by weeks, uh, basically the weeks where we don't have a team abbreviation, so you don't have a logo. Um, so a very simple if b2 equals by, then don't even try the image function, just leave it blank, the, give me uh, nothing back, and then close parenthesis. So now that's my new formula. I can, I once again, go and select all the cells, and then go into the edit formula by clicking inside the formula, control enter. So that will apply the formula. So we have the logo, um, all the logos applied correctly. And one last thing, if you want to do, uh, identify the road games with a different color. Um, so a simple trick would be, um, I would select all these cells again. And then, because we know which ones are road games, right? Because there is an at symbol in front of it. So I'm going to use that and uh, put it into a conditional formatting rule, new rule. So remember that I've selected all the logos where I want the rule to be applied. That's so extremely important. What cells you select before you open this conditional formatting uh, operation. So I'm going to go and say, use a formula to determine which cells to format. I will do equals left of B2. So the reason why I'm doing B2 is even though we are applying the color formatting to column V adapter, 
the logic stays there in column B to S. That is where the at symbol is. So I'm going to use that to color these columns. So that's why we refer to B2. So left of B2, comma 1. This function will take and extract the first character uh, from that value, from that cell. So if that first character is equals the at the rate symbol, then it's a road game. So apply a different um, you know, format. So I can do a little blue. Okay. Okay. So now Excel will apply that uh, formula the, to all the cells. And now you have all the road games highlighted with blue. So similarly, you can do different colors or borders, um, however you want to display, but this works fine for me. So what we have done in this video is extracted raw data from ESPN.com, brought that in, cleaned it up a little bit, understood, explored the data, understood the nuances. And then we created a grid, which looks a lot um, better from a visual perspective rather than the table structure. Now you have uh, a much uh, better looking from an aesthetics perspective. And this technique that we learned about using the image function to dynamically extract the data and create the logos will save a lot of time. Uh, and this could also be applied regardless of where the image is, wherever it's stored, as long as it's stored in a specific pattern, we can automate this like this um, using a very simple formula. If you remember, all of this was using this one formula that we applied to all the cells to dynamically generate this appearance. So hopefully this is helpful. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.